Okay. <clears throat> Try to share my screen. Sure. Go for sure. it. We have the document in front of us. Let's see. Can you, you got it? There. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, yes. now. Expected. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> okay. So Rob, I think we missed you the other night, right? Yes. Yeah. So there were uh I'm just gonna jump in. Is that okay? Please do. Yes. Okay. So one of the changes that we made out of conversation was to move IZ from the third goal up to the first goal to development. Because um, and there was quite a quite a bit of debate about this, but um, it really is about development, inclusionary zoning is development. So, and it felt like it was really trying to squeeze it into education that didn't really make sense. So the proposal was made to move it to development and a few of us supported that, felt like that made sense. And um, so that was the decision that was eventually made. So we didn't change the goal we kept, or the strategy, we kept it the same, but just moved it. That was one. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Rob. No, that's that seems fine to me. And then um, there was just a, a tweak with language under funding and B. Um, what did, what was it that we tweaked? It was uh, working towards a minimum. It was working towards a minimum. Okay, working towards a minimum. Um, I should have made a note of the language. We took out a word or something so that it was, um, yeah. so it was, it's, I think that that was, came from um, Allegra. Allegra. Okay. Working yeah. towards minimum 50% recommended transfer. Yeah. So very minor tweak. And then the main conversation was education and public engagement. So I should just do a um, insert a page break so we can see it all together. Sorry, can, can I ask a question and and, and, and we can come back, Shelly, or you and I can do it offline. Today. But did we ever talk about either in this group or the large group with the um, the CPA allocation, whether that was 15% pre-debt payment or 15% of the remaining CPA funds after debt payment? Did, did, did we talk about that? Or? Well, I think at the last meeting, Nate uh, implied that we should do it after debt payment. Okay. Really? I thought somebody said of the whole amount, which I assumed was before debt payment. So I don't, I don't oh. it's not clear to me anyway. I well, think it has to be clear. I think it's before because I think the ten percent for each category is before debt payment. The ten percent is before debt payment, but if you look at the debt payment for Amherst, then they've done their fifteen percent or ten percent. I'm sure. So I think that this is before debt payment, but yeah, it's okay. We should we should clarify that. Um, so why don't we? Maybe we need to put it right. What? In the that's really clear. Well, yeah. Why don't I talk to Nate and just double con double confirm what 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 he yeah thinks, and then see if uh, and I, I I need to get some bigger numbers from him generally from CPA like yeah yeah um, yeah because I, I know uh, Carol and I went to a couple of CPA meetings and when they were doing the decision making the debt payment's pretty high. And that's why they feel, I mean, they're, they're very committed. The group that's there right now is very committed to supporting affordable housing trust. But when you look at the debt payment, um, there's a there's a huge amount uh, going to affordable housing. So if, if it's before debt payment, then uh, we'll get very little. The affordable housing initiatives for Amherst will get the amount, but we as a trust will get very little. Well, this is asking this is asking fifteen percent to go to the trust from the total. So why do we get very little? If you read the way I read this, it doesn't matter what the debt payment is. We still get fifteen percent of the total. Okay. I mean, okay. I guess is that I, clarification, I, Greg. Uh, yeah. Okay. That 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 makes sense. So, but but I and I guess what 
we think, and, and I think the consensus here I'm hearing is our, our impression is our goal is 15% of the total annual CPA bucket before CPA subtracts their debt payments, not after. I would just so say, I wouldn't buy, I, I, if it's 15% of the total bucket, the total bucket is the total bucket. We don't have to say that other part. That's okay. internal okay. to okay. them, That's I fine. think. Right. Somebody correct me if I'm well, wrong, but in any I mean, of the meetings I mean, that I've gone to, they talk about what they have. Here is the whole thing. And this much of it has to go to debt payment, but here is the whole thing. I didn't, okay. I think, I mean, ask Nate, and, I, he's done it longer than me. Yeah. And right. presumably so, the maybe, path towards this will have, yeah. So maybe the we can write some nuance as well. Right. So I'm wondering, I know, Carol, you think it's clear, but maybe we can say seek a yearly CPA contribution to the trust from the town or that from the town to the trust working toward a minimum of 15%, just putting in specifically to the trust. So they don't think it's just affordable housing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I Definitely don't... the trust. Yeah, you okay. Well, like... everything else is about the trust. So, I mean, whatever you want, okay. I don't know. All right, but I mean, it's fine as long as it, it's clear. I mean, we're going to, are we going to go in front of some of these boards and present this to them? Because that's when the questions may come. I would say Why that would that's part of our, whatever strategy, if this is our goal, this is our goal, then how do we do it? Then that's the, then you ask that question, I think. Okay. I think that's a strategic question, not a goal question. Okay. All right. Well, as long as it's clear to everybody, that's fine. I think that Nate's always suggested that it's before the debt is excluded, is taken out. Okay. But I think it's a fair point that if all the debt service is going to housing, then it could take longer to get to that 15%. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I think you should shoot big. Doesn't hurt. But education. <laughs> you won't get it if you don't ask. Education and public engagement. So a couple changes with these. Um, primarily, it was some language. So A, it was made to facilitate strategic engagements with municipal boards to keep members abreast of local housing needs and build partnerships between boards. So we took out annual. We took out annual, right. So there was some resistance to the idea of annual and some of what that, the formality of it and um, felt a little bit restricted. So we are proposing this idea of engagements because this could be, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a meeting. It could be um, uh, a write-up of something that is, it could be presenting your goals or it could be, it could be a, a, a different kind of format. So um, the annual meeting felt too restrictive. And it could be a meeting that somebody else was facilitating that we attended. I mean, it just feels more flexible if it's just strategic engagements, whatever they may turn out to be. So it is still saying that the trust is facilitating. So it is that you're proactively creating these engagements, but um, it's just a little bit less formal and restrictive as an annual meeting. And for some of us, you know, that are involved in nonprofits, like an annual meeting is a big is a big deal and much more formal. So, and then D, build really we we turn the sentence around. So build relationships, awareness, and participation among targeted constituency groups identified as housing cost burden and Amherst housing production plan. So we turned it around and simplified it a little bit. Um, and I, I do think that it's clear. I like it better this way around. Me yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Simplifies it a little bit. Yep. yep. But still really saying that it's it's groups that have been identified as housing cost burden. So it's an intentional reaching out and relationship building with groups that are particularly um, struggling in Amherst. Yep. So those are 
so the changes from the last meeting and uh, the, for the most part, I think they're pretty minor. And so I think that this can go before your meeting again, if, if folks don't have any additional changes. And then we should kind of decide what's what's the next step. It seems like there are all kinds of things we talked about doing kind of in addition to this or coming up with some kind of strategies to go with the goals for one thing. And I'm looking at the thing at the bottom of this, consider adding to trust guidelines. I don't even know where that, where are the trust guidelines? Was that something we were wanting to look at again? The thing that we have is kind of, nobody ever even looked at it or uses it much. So it seems like the first thing is, hopefully the way this is now, if we are all liking it, which it seems like we are, we will present it to the trust to, to adopt. This is our, these are our goals for the next few years, five years, five years. Yeah. Five years, I think. Five years. And then the next step seemed to be um, coming off with some strategies and hopefully the strategies will involve coming up with people to pursue the particular strategies that we come up with. I don't know. That's my two cents. There was, a, uh, I think, in, in our timeline, there was also mention of making this public to see uh, with regards to in, uh, public input. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I forget that all the time. <laughs> so we could put it on our website. The only thing is, is that most people wouldn't go on the website unless they knew there was something to go on there for. Um, so the, the only concern I have is uh, bumping up against the HPP focus group meetings uh, and, and trying to get input from there. I think people are limited in terms of how much input they want to provide. But I mean, we could put it on a website. Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, one part of the education piece, uh, right in the Gazette, there was um, a piece around the trust providing $350,000 to Valley. I wonder if whoever wrote that could maybe talk about that we finished our action plan, we're looking for input, um, you know, these are the types of things that we've done in the past. This is going to be our guideline for the future. And maybe that would give people some opportunity to get to our website and give some feedback. Oh, one of the other, one easy thing we can do is if it's, it's going to be on our agenda next time anyway, I could send out something earlier than when we have the whole agenda to our long hundred people or whatever it is list saying, look, here is our proposed goals for the next five years, please either respond here or come to our meeting in order to give us some commentary. Mm. I mean, that's, yeah. we can do that. Yep. And I know Representative Dom is really good at sending out newsletters and sometimes uh, she puts in things about meetings that, you know, people are looking for input on or um, George Ryan with his newsletter uh, that I get, even though I'm not in his district. Um, it often has things in there about what the town's looking for. So maybe there's another two ways of getting input for the next meeting. Yeah. Tell them to come. All right. Well, it looks like we have a, a, a plan for getting input. So over the next, so we'll put this on the agenda for September, right? Yeah. Yes. So the next two months, so September and October, I could still support your work. And there's two things I'm thinking about. Either one, it's this group meeting a couple more times to think about an implementation strategy. Or um, I don't think we could do both. Um, or maybe we could do both. I, I, what I would offer is to read through your existing guidelines and just add some markups of suggestions about modifications. And then you would take it yourself of maybe Greg could help facilitate that conversation of um, later in the fall if you're wanting to revisit that. But those are two suggestions of maybe what we want to still try to do in the next couple months. Sounds good. Rob, what do you think? I would say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say that from a staff perspective, I would find it very valuable for Shelley to mark up our existing guidelines. 
as she posed. I agree. I also would find it valuable for this group to meet a couple more times with whatever in the world it is that we, I mean, we can come up with some clear idea of what we're trying to do, but it seems like there's enough possibilities. We could look at the marked up guidelines. We could get Shelley's help in trying to think about how to come up with strategies to go with the goals. Either one or both of those things would seem valuable to me to do with this group. And the more conversations, the better it is, it seems like. I feel like um, when we started this process, maybe before Shelley joined us, there was talk about developing goals and then the entire group, the entire trust, sort of breaking into groups to work on goals. So in other words, there might now we have three broad categories of goals. Trust members should choose one of those categories to sort of focus on it and have these small groups going forward after that to work on strategies. That's a good idea. So that sounds like a good action plan to introduce to the group. Um, yeah. We'd probably have to, um, well, Greg, you meet with Gaston um, to make sure that he's on board with this. But I, I agree with you, uh, Rob. I think that's a great idea right from the beginning to get people uh, to identify areas that they are interested in and then have them move forward with developing strategic um, action plan. So your September meeting is on the 12th, right? And then our meeting is on the 19th the next week. So hopefully for the 19th, we'll have on the 12th, hopefully we'll have some agreement on the goals and strategies. And then perhaps we can, um, at that meeting, ask people to, or maybe even in your email beforehand, or to think about what areas they're interested in. And maybe get it to one of you. We can identify, or maybe just to Greg, if they can get feedback to Greg that we can start talking about on the nineteenth about structuring it. Or like, you know, you don't want to spread the team too thin right away. But what are a few key areas based on people's interests? And then maybe we can talk to them on the nineteenth um, what that might look like a little bit. Sounds good. And I'll plan to have gone through your guidelines and start just making some comments. And then if we have time, we can maybe split the meeting on the 19th. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can I ask if or maybe actually propose uh, going back to the feedback piece of this? Um, and I, I want to be thoughtful and productive about that um, in the sense that one like we like i guess what's the function of getting like feedback you know i, I think it's sort of what i'm asking and and i think keep keeping in mind that uh a broad a broad net is going to produce unpredictable participation i mean like there's some predictable folks who, who, who we think will likely give us feedback but then we'll get we'll get randoms you know it's so like somebody might say 200 homes you should be supporting 2000 homes you know, or um, it, we, it needs to be entirely ownership, right? So you'll have, we'll have some, you know, we'll, we'll get some good stuff. We'll also get some fairly uninformed feedback, frankly, if we do a big public push for feedback. And I just want to sort of anticipate that there may be a need to sort of, you know, not take some of that, you know? And, and I guess I just want to like get, you know, for, for reasons that will make sense to all of us, the people on the trust, but but might not to in the in the public consumption necessarily, depending on how widely we push it, who decides to show up and, and offer input. Um, it, so, I mean, I, that's I, I, that's kind of like a, uh, a a pitfall I want to avoid. One thing, and I'm just thinking about going to the subcommittee side or going to the, the, the what, what do you want to work on question, right? A modest proposal to maybe bypass some of the problematic stuff that, you know, that a, a very public feedback process can produce is we can just ask people like a more focused question or questions. But like, to me, 
a functional thing might be, which of these strategies are you most excited about? You know, like the concrete feedback question we could ask is to say, which of these strategies, whether it's trust members or it's the public at large, of the, you know, the whatever it is, total strategies, 15 or something, you know, which, which of these stick out to you that you're most excited about that you want, really want to see happen in Amherst, right? So that will do two things. So one, it will tell us like where there's, it, it, it moves it away from people throwing darts, you know, or, or just nitpicking. And two, it tells us, oh, here's where people are genuinely excited. And that might be an indicator to us. Here's maybe where, something we should leave with perhaps. Is that? I, I absolutely agree with you that helping to structure and helping to focus things helps people to be much clearer about feedback. Um, and I think not setting people up with, oh, just because you're giving it doesn't mean we're going to take it. So I agree. I, so I think what you're talking about, how do we structure this to be constructive, a constructive conversation? Um, yeah. So um, having questions like, yes, which ones are you most excited about? Um, but I think there are probably going to be people too. I mean, I hate to set up with what do you think would, what are some, what is one thing that you think is missing out of this? It is a setup because I mean, I could, I could look at this and say, you know, from just as an example, um, there's nothing in there that's specific to uh, specific populations like seniors or people of color, which we've discussed already. You know, we know, you know, that we're doing it this way. Um, but there are going to be people who are going to say that. And then if we don't put it in there, they're going to like, ah, you know, Amherst is not interested in helping seniors or people of color. So it is, it is a double-edged sword in getting community engagement. But I think part of it is um, you know, also prefacing it with, you know, we, we feel these are very specific and targeted. It doesn't exclude. Um, we are very aware that there are particular um, groups and, you know, under C, you know, you get, you can actually, on the three, you can actually see that we are through the housing production plan going to be working with very specific groups that we're already aware of that might have a cost burden in terms of rental and ownership. So we're not putting specific groups in there because it then might limit us or exclude other groups. So, I mean, I think part of it is being able to respond to some of that. Um, but yes, uh, I mean, that's, that happened in the focus groups. We had all kinds of things we submitted and it took a lot of filtering um, and sometimes it took uh, really sort of wordsmithing diplomatically, um, you know, because you have those outliers that are sometimes really outrageous, outrageous on one side or the other side. Um, so I think being mindful and structuring it will be important. Otherwise, it's going to be set up for those participating for us. Well. So how do you want to do that? Do we want to do that with Gaston or do we want to do that now? So what I'm wondering about talking about, I'm wondering if you could maybe propose the model of having There's guys, a lot of background noise from someplace. I don't know, it's not here. Um, three subcommittees, one for each of the goals, and then ask people to think about, because as I'm thinking about the different strategies under the goals, there, there may be a couple that, that need to be worked on simultaneously. And if we just ask people to to go based on their the strategy that they're interested in, we might get just people on development and then nothing would happen under education. So what I'm wondering is if we should propose three subcommittees and then ask people to look at the strategies and which ones that they're interested in working on to consider who's on what subcommittee, but then to set up the expectation that we will want people to be working on all of these areas and that everyone can't just be on development or just on education. Um, but then that each sub subcommittee can kind of decide at which pace or at first, what are the two um, strategies that they're working on, perhaps based on either urgency, what's happening in the community and or the interests of people who are sitting on it. And I know your committee is not that big, so it would be probably only maybe two people per subcommittee um but then that sets it up it, it makes it so that we're not setting it up where it's everyone can do development if they want i mean that's not really you don't really want everyone just doing development right yes but just to clarify shelly um i think greg and i what we're talking to is um 
the larger community input in terms of the the you know the challenges of how do we make sure people feel that they're being heard at the same time we're not going to really change what we've got tremendously um and so um how to sort of structure that so we don't set them up to think um their input will be automatically accepted um we want to hear from them but at the same time there's going to be a limitation of what we can what we will what we're willing to include <laughs> uh, at this point in time so that was sort of the, you know, thinking about how to structure that um, or maybe limit, I mean, maybe limit it until the subcommittees finish um, if we want to do that. Um, you know, there, we could limit it to, uh, Carol sends out the message to everyone who's already very interested and involved and just limit it to that and then post it on um, the Amherst website at this point in time and just leave it at that versus having a megaphone saying, hey, everybody, we want your input. So, because I guess the concern could be that then the meeting on the 12th could be totally blown out of the water where trustees are feeling angst or whatever because of comments that are being made. Yeah, or, or just structuring it a little bit more. And so uh, Greg, one of Greg's, which I think is very good, always starting on the positive, which is uh, which one of these really excites you? Because then we might get some um, engagement once the strategies, you know, when people are starting to work on the strategies, what really excites you about this? Um, and then I'm, I'm wondering if we leave it at that because it's an open-ended question where people can put their input in um, and they can, you know, there'll always be somebody who said, this really excites me, but, <laughs> you know, there's always the but, or we can say, um, you know, what really excites you? And then what do you think something that might be glaring missing, but we just want to, um, to note that we've had a long, large conversation. So what you might think is missing, we've already had this conversation and we can respond to why it's not written in there. It doesn't mean that we're not gonna do it and focus on it, but it might just not be written in there. I see. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood what it was. Oh, that's okay. okay. <laughs> we, we all, it seems to me we also talked about some of those missing things that you're just mentioning coming up when we try to write the guidelines and the, some of the other stuff so it won't, even though it's missing from here, it may be documented somewhere else, not just something in our heads or wherever, but we expect that some of that will come up when, we, as we look at our guidelines again. So not every, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. I definitely like the idea of having some questions. I, I It really always concerns me to Put out this sort of what do you think Amherst should do and then you get stuff that you know Amherst can't do but people want you to do it but then it's just like yeah I don't I don't want to do that I don't want to go there well what well, just you know, yeah and I, I I I'm glad to hear that I, I that's my kind of assumption I just got you know I, you know it so I what if we just I don't know I, I my brain thinks in threes and I'm not sh quite sure what the third question is yet but like what if a, a way to sort of channel feedback a little bit was in the meeting announcement and we could do the meeting announcement before we have a full agenda as as Carol mentioned you know what if we you know posted the draft you know had had three I, and I think maybe three questions tops you know um and 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 maybe a fourth of like anything else you know you know so we don't you know you know and then or two, <laughs> Erica wants two, and, you know, and then we, um, you know, and and then we, we could report, and we we could do a little survey, you know, we could do a survey monkey or whatever, so people or an email or something, people could respond in writing, you know, and then we could we we could summarize that, you know, in a presentation or in the discussion on the twelfth, make space for anybody who wants to offer public comment in the moment on the twelfth. And then let the trust absorb. I mean, does does that keep it relatively contained, but still open the door for appropriately for public feedback? Depends on what the questions are. I I guess that <laughs> which of these excites you? That I like that question a lot, and and that could even be in some kind of survey, so you know you yes. people can actually respond and easily respond and let us know which of these, which three of these do you like the best or something? I don't know. Somebody going to tell us everything excites them. I guess that's okay. But, um, but then also, 
how do we do this without getting out in front of the trust, which has not yet adopted this? That's the other kind of squishy thing or asking for feedback that sounds like it's a done deal if we're saying which of these excites you. I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that, but it, we need to somehow make that clear. This is our this is our draft. We expect we hope you know this is at least close, hopefully, to what is going to be adopted. And so we'd like to know as we think through this some more, which of the things are the most exciting to you. But this has to be clear somehow in the way that it's presented that we're not saying this is already cast in stone and yeah and I like that question and I don't care if there's not any more than that question that question plus is there anything else you want to tell us would kind of be fine with me I don't I don't need there to be three questions especially if this question has some way for people to actually let us know which of the things excite them yeah, I mean, we could even do, I, th I think we have Survey Monkey. I don't know. I'm sure we have something. You know, we could even do a, we could list all the strategies, let people rank them. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, cause, and honestly, I'm thinking kind of selfishly here, like, I'd love to let people submit their names. So, like, hey, if, if Rob Crowner's, you know, heading up a, a development subcommittee, you know, for the trust, you know, here's three or four people. Who said, yeah, I'd help with that, you know, because we, we could have, I think, members working in those groups that don't have to be full trust members. That's right. Um, and I think we should, Frank, we should, that's, that's, that should be an aspiration. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, the, the, to me, this is a juncture to sort of attract some of that interest. I was going to suggest asking people if they want to help with implementing the goals and maybe you ask which goal they want to help, they'd like to help with. I, I would not let them rank stuff because I think that's giving too much control or expectation of prioritizing the trust work. So I, I wouldn't go there, but I, I, I do think that, that we should propose openness to allowing non-members to be on subcommittees because that can just help more workers to get more, more stuff done, but they wouldn't be voting members of a trust. They would just be working on some of the strategies. I think that's a great idea. So procedurally, I think Carol is right. We might have to put this in front of the trust before we can move because we're, we can't do decision-making. Uh, the, the trust has to make that decision. Can we not make a decision to ask people? Without the, can we not decide that part of what we want to do with the subcommittee is ask for input? I mean, the trust has said it wanted input somewhere along so I didn't feel like we're doing anything particularly out of turn. Well, we're proposing that other non-trustees be on subcommittees of the trust. I think that 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 really should be like we'd be proposing that to the full trust, but I think that they do, do need to decide that model. Yes. We yeah. Ask the public to say, do you want to help implement? Because then we're setting them up. It's like we're going around the trust, so we wouldn't want to ask that sort of a question without it going before the trust board, I don't think. Yeah, that makes sense. We can ask people what excites them or what they're interested in, right? They go back to people if they... What's, what's I know we, we've really extended, especially your your uh, help, Shelly, but for us, what's the problem of waiting one more meeting? What's the problem of what? waiting for one more meeting to put this by the trust and then oh. in October. It just means yep. that we don't have another month after that to, um, it, it's fine. To work with you, but we could do the work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you could decide to just go at your September 12th meeting and get the trust basically to say, I mean, I guess you could always still reach out. And if there's something that really seems like a good suggestion, you could always go back and modify. You could decide as a board. So you could just go nine, on the September 12th meeting and we could get the trust to everyone to feel okay with the goals and the strategies. We could talk about the idea of having non-trustees be on subcommittees. We could do some of that. And then you could go out to the community and come back to kind of review anything in the October meeting, like that would be fine. If that feels more kind of more comfortable and, you know, we don't want to cause any trustees to feel 
in any way that we're going around them or, or not being inclusive. I mean, they are the decision makers. Rob, what do you think? <laughs> You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other about about the order. Um, okay. Because I I don't I don't I think there will be some response, but I don't think there there will be so much response that it'll be unmanageable. You know, if we do it first, we get acts as for public input first. Um, but but also waiting, also you know, logically seems to make sense. So. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't really have a strong. That's okay, should, that's okay. <laughs> I just want to hear it. <laughs> I think we should err on the side of respecting the whole trust board, go to them first, and then just say that the vote is, you know, pending feedback that, you know, things might change in October. But I think we should probably just, especially because you have newer members and just to make sure we don't rub anyone. Okay. So, so we have a plan. And it doesn't yeah. involve, just to make sure I'm clear, it doesn't involve me sending out a thing first to people about this. This will just go out with, here is one of the things in the meeting coming up, We will, and that, it just goes out with everything else, like everything else. Okay, good. I, I think po possibly made. before October. Yeah. I mean, people have been able to come. They've seen your notes. They know that it's been on the agenda. So they could have been coming if they wanted to. They could comment, right? That's I mean, true. It's, so it's not like you've been hiding it or haven't been sending it out. Well, in these, this meeting, these meetings are open. If somebody wanted to come to these meetings, they could come to these meetings too. Right. Yeah. So people aren't looking for most people. Most people aren't looking for more more meetings. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth and and so i think that we're, we're am i correct that we're agreeing that if the you know presenting other trust members agree that we seek public input between our september and our, our october meetings that's mm -hmm. the that's the window for that um and the thing that i'll say to you know is we can do that and you know i i at the staff level i'll work to sort of you know, share links or surveys wherever we land. I want to note too that I'll probably end up integrating this with the HPP public meeting and probably there's also going to be a, a meeting on the VFW kind of all between somewhere between like 9, 15 and 10, 15. We'll probably do all three of these things. So, which is fine, you know, I, mean, I think, so I think like it's actually good because we can say, hey, there's lots of ways to, you know, offer input and learn about housing in Amherst this month. You know, um, so if, it's, if, if you see it integrated in other things, that's that's why. So some air traffic control right now. So for the September meeting, let's do, I'm thinking three key things. One, bring everyone on board for the goals and strategies so that we, um, and then, but with the caveat that perhaps we will revisit in October if there's with potential feedback to talk about public engagement, allowing for there to be some intentional feedback. And Greg, if you would kind of put together a proposal for that. And sure. then the yep. is um, seeing if the trustees feel comfortable with part of that being that subcommittees, implementation subcommittees could include people outside of the board. So they would be a part of, um, the work of, of a subcommittee uh, that's a uh, um, goal specific. Um, I might I might do a little bit of write up and run it by you, but that can be put in the package. So this is a little bit more clear, but um, because it's it's a couple things. It's one that the we're talking about implementation of the goals and strategies, and so one it's the model that there would be potentially three subcommittees, one for each goal, and then two that we would potentially invite people outside of the trust to engage in on that level understanding that that's not a decision making position so much that decisions would still come to the full trust board mm -hmm. or who make the decisions but that the uh, um the subcommittees would work on the um, specific actions to move your strategies forward something like that so 
I'll put together some sort of language um, to help us be succinct and um, hopefully efficient at the meeting on the 12th, since you do have other stuff you need to cover. And the third thing is that we will continue to meet a couple more times, this group right here, I think, and that you will go through our guidelines and kind of give us, I, mean, I would like to go through that. Maybe that's what this group right here, if you have time to get it done by our next meeting, could look at that together. I, yep. I would think that would be really valuable. Yep. So for our September 19th meeting, I'm hoping that part of it will be that we'll split it between implementation, discussing some um, implementation moving forward. And then two is the guidelines. Yes. Great. Okay. I like that. Okay. I think we have some next steps. I think we're good. Yeah. Thank Yay, you. team. <laughs> Shelly, thank you. I mean, I will get to say it again, but thank you so far along. It's very yeah. helpful, everything. So thanks so yeah. much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. Tool. Okay, so we will be in touch. All right. Take care. Take care. Hey, hey Shelly, quick, quick question. Do, I don't suppose you had a chance to email Paul a list of um, oh. uh, communities that uh, do an automatic transfer. Yeah. You still and, want to, you know, we brought up a couple of communities. Do you think he still wants Yes. That? Somerville. Uh, yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah, there were a couple. I think it was Somerville, Cambridge. I actually looked up Cambridge and I couldn't find anything really specific. It just on their website under funding for their trust said they get major support from the CPA, but so do we. So I don't know what that means, but I kept on trying to look specifically. They did have a contact person, but I haven't yeah. had a chance to call them. If so, there's any smaller communities too, that, that'd be really good to know. But yeah, I mean, we don't have a really great list. It's just that every now and then I hear and then I I don't necessarily make a note of it. So that's kind of the, the trouble is to- Okay. To, like Grafton, you, if you Grafton? Like you look at Grafton, their um, CPA, just under the the Community Preservation Coalition's listing of their projects that you just oftentimes see a chunk. And I, I don't think that they require an application. I think that they just transfer it. So Grafton would be a smaller community that might be a good option. That's great. Okay. I'll look at that one as well. And I'll see if I can see anything with Somerville. It might just be that I have an email from someone of saying we do forty five percent every year, but I'll I'll try to find it. Okay, yeah, and yeah, if it, don't, don't break, you know, if, if it's easily to share, great. If not, okay, that, you know, that's fine. Um, and and Shelly, yeah, Shelly, if you want me to call anybody, just let me know which town, and I'll do it. Okay, great. Okay, great. I was hoping that we satisfied him enough, but I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want specifics. I know Paul. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I would love if it's Somerville because that's where he came from. Oh, really? Okay. Well, so yes. I will refer, but it might be in an email. I might have an email that they confirm forty five percent. So I'll 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 search my emails. It might Perfect. be a few. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.